Did you see this? What? It's time to work. Break the volume up. This is the RHL Report. Hi guys, I'm Jules Beeler with your news and notes. The NFL playoff picture is as pretty as a cloudy day in the Pacific Northwest. That's because the Seattle Seahawks stole the NFC's fourth seed, so the team that's named after a fictitious bird will host the world champion Saints. God bless America. The other NFC wildcard is slated to be an explosive Michael Vick contest versus another explosive Aaron Rodgers contest. It's kind of bitching, huh? God bless technology. The game, though, even more bitching. Can't wait for this one. It's in Philly. Vic is healthy, but so is Clay Matthews. It's going to be a good one. The top AFC matchup pits sexy Rexy Hovna to Indy to take on Peyton Manning. Now, Ryan says it's personal, and I don't think he's talking about Peyton's latest commercial with Gold Bond foot powder. And the BCS title game is Monday night. We know LaMichael James will be returning to Oregon regardless of the outcome. And we know Cam Newton, he'll be bolting for the NFL regardless of the outcome. The fireworks will be flying higher than the War Eagle in this one, but if Chip Kelly can contain Cam, Oregon could claim its first national title. And that's your news and notes. We'll see you next week. Thanks to Definition 6 for all you do for the RHL Report. All right, Red Hot Rocks, with me today is Tony Windis, who just won 300 grand in the World Championship of Fantasy Football. Tony, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Dave. That's fantastic, Tony. Okay, I got to know, 300 grand changed your life a little bit? Oh, my God. You can't imagine how much so. It makes my job a lot easier to go to during the day. Family's taken care of. That's fantastic, Tony. Next question for you, Tony, is what was the one fantasy player that put you over the top this year? Oh, it, it, you know, easily, uh, Michael Vick. Uh, you know, once I acquired him in week two, uh, you know, I mean, he just made my team special and brought me back from some games where I didn't think I had a chance to win. Uh, without a doubt, Michael Vick. Hey, the Mike Vick experience strikes again, Tony. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to seeing you in Vegas next year. Me too. I'll see you there. Here's the triple tweet of the week. Starting off, the funniest man in the NFL is never too afraid to pump up his childhood idol. Damn, no playoffs. Lockout coming, my dog's fighting criminal charges. Man, where are Bobby and Whitney at? I need what they be using. Darnell, baby. I think they test for that sort of thing. Speaking of drug tests, Ocho Cinco thinks he's being singled out yet again. Would y'all believe I got another random drug test today before our exit meeting? Why am I being tested again? This is test number 11 in six months. Chad, maybe your play on the field has them wandering. Finally, NFL Live anchor Trey Wingo had the best thought on the Colts first Titans. After watching Antoine Bethea run out of gas on the field goal return, I bet he gets the Hainsworth conditioning run at camp next year. I am Kimberly Sargent with your RHL Report Triple Tweet of the Week. Thanks to Bootlegger 21 Vodka for sponsoring the RHL Report. Here's Circus Dave, unfiltered. Hey everybody, I'm Circus Dave and you're not, and this is Circus Dave Unfiltered. The winningest coach in University of Pittsburgh history is Mike Haywood? What? He hasn't lost yet? The biggest surprise was not that he was fired, but that four other guys have the same undefeated record that he does in the same type of firing. The Patriots, Steelers, Falcons, and my Chicago Bears all have first round buys this week, while the Buccaneers and the Giants are sitting at home watching the Seahawks? Black Monday in the NFL is cut day for coaches. With the collective bargaining agreement undecided, do you think NFL owners are too cheap to pay coaches when there's no football? Here's the pick of the week. RedHotBox.com senior writer Mike Anderson is here with the pick of the week. Go, Mike. All right, we're going to take Oregon plus the three points in the national championship game. These teams both score a ton. The difference in this one is going to be that if Oregon gets a big lead, as others have on Auburn, the Tigers will not catch them. All right, everybody, you heard it here. Mike Anderson takes Oregon with the points in the BCS championship. Thanks, Mike. Another great show thanks to the RedHotLocks.com writers. Check the show out at YouTube, Spike TV, Vimeo, Vidler, and RedHotLocks.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.